What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. A whole slew of new articles about some comments that Joe Rogan made are, are making the rounds, both not just on some social media censorship topics, but also some interesting paperwork that his uh, young daughter got sent from her school at the age of nine. Some insane propagandistic stuff that, you know, the mainstream media keeps telling us doesn't exist and tells us that we're some sort of like conspiracy theorists or, you know, we're overblowing this kind of stuff. It's happening out there and it's happening all the time. And, you know, there's a reason that there's a, ma a major surge in homeschooling right now. Um, I'm a big proponent of, you know, cameras in every classroom. Parents should be able to know what their teachers are saying because I've just seen too much. I've seen hundreds of lunatic teachers posting to TikTok proud of their own degeneracy and their weirdness, and not weirdness, weirdness is okay, but like, you know, proud of like indoctrinating kids. And if that's just the percentage of people that post to TikTok, how many more are there? Um, it's actually frightening. But, uh, you know, the, Joe's latest comments are, are quite poignant. And we're going to get into that after a quick word from this video sponsor, Sheath. Huge shout out to this video sponsor. That's right, Sheath. These boxers are designed to keep your balls off your legs. Sheath has three individual compartments to keep everything down there separate and cool and comfortable. And hey, since they've been a long time sponsor, I've heard from many of you who have tried out Sheath and really love it. They were invented by a US Army soldier who came up with the idea for Sheath during his second tour in Iraq, where it was hot as heck and his boys needed to breathe. And on top of all sorts of awesome designs for Sheath, they've added all sorts of winter items, hoodies, gator necks, and all sorts of base layers. Head on over to the link in the description and pin comment down below. Use my promo code to save and support the channel and keep everything nice, cool, and dry. Yeah, I know trying a d different uh, under undergarments is probably not something most guys think about, but uh, give them a try. I think you'll probably like them. That's not discourse. That's propaganda. Joe Rogan uh, roasts people who call for censorship on social media. This is via the Daily Wire. Joe Rogan said nothing drives him more crazy than people who are calling for censorship on social media, arguing that when people insist on removing thoughts they disagree with, that's not discourse, that's propaganda. During the JRE on Tuesday, the host spoke with playwright and filmmaker Dave Mamet, who, and the two talked about what can be done to stop censorship on sites like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. The two also dis discussed how people calling for censorship of things they disagree with are pushing towards an authoritarian dictatorship. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, <clears throat> that, you know, if you want to know who would be like most likely to embrace fascism, it's usually the people screaming, calling everyone else a fascist online. Um, you know, authoritarianism, same thing. Um, you know, the, all these weirdo daddy, you know, govern me hardy, harder daddy weirdos, the people that wear their, um, you know, Team Moderna t-shirts out in public, they're like sheep begging for it. They're like, please tell me what to think. Please. I just desperately need to be told what to think and how to act. And um, these are also the same people that are generally say, uh, against free speech, you know, free freedom of discourse. I get that social media platforms have to um, have some limits, some terms of service. It's just the world we live in. Now, you know, there are options like the closest you can probably get is Gab in terms of social media where almost anything goes, but they even have terms of service that disallow a lot of things that even Twitter allows. So there is no like real free speech uh, online anymore because there's too many people with their hands in the cookie jar, whether it's, you know, Patreon banning people on behalf, behalf of MasterCard or, um, you know, PayPal disallowing payments for a website because they support somebody that they don't like. There's just, or, or like an ISP removing your web hosting or your, your domain registrar removing your domain name. The, all these companies are involved in politics uh, and making sure the world knows that they're the good guys and, and, um, they're not afraid to stomp on anybody to prove it. And the people that are generally pro censorship are also, uh, pro idiocy. 
Um, you know, the same people that demanded banning for a lot of these people who had different opinions about, you know, the coof and stuff like that. You know, a lot of these people, sure, they were wrong. Um, but some of the things that people said ended up being right. But did they get unbanned? No. They've been memory hold. The narrative is controlled. And that's exactly how Sheep wanted. The host of Mamet talked about how people celebrated when certain people got removed from Twitter. Um, Rogan said that even back then, he had warned people where this kind of thing would lead. Well, everyone knew that. Do you understand that once they start censoring for what they believe is something that's objectionable, it's going to keep going further and further, Rogan shared. They're going to keep moving the goalpost. They'll eventually come to you, he added, and they're not going to be left enough. You might, And you might be really left-wing Democrat like Bill Maher. Like they're coming for Bill Maher all the time now. Mamet added, or that Sarah Silverman who thought, wait, 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 this is my own party. It doesn't matter. You're on the censorship train, the host shared, and there's only so many stops before they get to your effing house. But as soon as he had started saying, but as soon as you start saying the only, I only want to hear thoughts I agree with, that's not discourse. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is you can self-select that if you want. I could go on Getter and listen to nonstop right-wing talking points. That's why, that's the... That's the um, the inconvenient truth of why Twitter still is around because people like to argue. It's not fun to go somewhere where everyone agrees with you. It's boring, okay? Not being able to dunk on woke idiots uh, makes Getter and Parler and Truth Social and all these things extraordinarily less intriguing to most people, including myself. Now, I use the platforms because I support alt tech, but the true alt tech is one that isn't an echo chamber. Right now, everything basically is. Um, not, and then that's not like their own fault. It's just alt tech is generally originally populated by people who have banned, been banned everywhere else. And it seems like right wingers are the ones that are really embracing alt tech right now. There's not a lot of people uh, who are like, man, I can't, I can't, uh, Proclaim my extreme left-wing political ideology on YouTube and Twitter without getting censored. Because those companies agree with you. You aren't getting censored. There's no reason for a lot of these far-left lunatics to leave Twitter or YouTube. Because they're not only not getting shadow banned or blocked or banned like many right-wingers are. They're getting actively promoted. Every time I open my YouTube app, for example, it's it shows me... Um, community posts okay it is almost never anything i'm interested in now youtube knows who i am they have all the data why are they and it's always some woke crap uh like why are you showing me this you know i'm not interested in it it's because youtube just promotes it you know without question he also went on to slam a california school that pushed uh some woke anti-racism on his nine-year-old and says that he doesn't even know what the ideology means Joe Rogan is slamming the California elementary school that he claims pushed woke anti-racism ideology on his nine-year-old. The podcaster claims the unnamed school used a blanket statement in an email in 2020 telling families that students must be anti-racist, something he said the kids were even too young to even understand. The whole When the whole St. Floyd thing happened, one of the schools that my kids were going to back in California released an email saying that it's not enough to not be racist, but you must be anti. I mean, we saw this saying everywhere, right? Rogan has been embroiled in his own racial controversy over old clips from him using a, uh, the naughty word. Said he could support schools teaching students that you know racism is stupid, but argues that teaching them to be anti is inappropriate. The kids are not even remotely racist. Like They have all sorts of different kinds of friends, he said. I never heard him discuss it once. It's like, oh, I like this person. She's nice to me. We play together. We both like the same things. He said, so to tell a nine-year-old that you have to be this, well, th then they're going to go look for it, that they have to go look for it. They're going to go looking for it. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, Rogan also criticized the educators who truly believe pushing the woke curriculum was a good idea, calling them naive. They weren't that good at teaching in the first place, the podcaster argued. And now here's this thing saying they're going to go tackle something, not just tackle something as complex as race in America, but you're going to establish rules that you can't just not be racist. You have to be actively anti. 
and you're going to teach us to a nine-year-old, he questioned. So what are you going to say? Like, what exactly are you saying is your effing end goal? He said he supported academics and instilling values of equality, but his daughter's school agenda was confusing. It wasn't confusing to them. You know, a lot of those emails, by the way, that get written, I believe they are written like with the express purpose of being public. They want, the school wants that email to get out because whatever loser wrote it, right? They want the clout. That's why all these teachers are always going on TikTok. To say like, ooh, there's this one yesterday. Ooh, I have a, a transition closet so that my when my fifth graders come in, they can change into the clothes that really make them feel who they really are. I tell them it's like being Superman. No, what this teacher is actually doing is um, enabling students um, and hiding things from their parents. Um, that's not that teacher's job, but you know they do think that you know that is their job. If you just listen to these lunatics, follow lives to TikTok. There's another two or three every single day posting lunacy to the public, thinking that they're like crusaders and they all sound like groomers to me, you know? And it's like, this stuff is out there. You sure he was in school in California, you know, but we see it in the Midwest. We see it, you know, every time it pops up, it's very obvious to, uh, to anybody who's paying attention that, um, you know, I don't think that homeschooling is the ultimate answer either. I think ousting these lunatics is the answer because, you know, ultimately our tax dollars are paying for this stuff. So these these teachers that, you know, cross a line and think it's their job to, you know, teach a third grader about anything but writing in cursive or whatever. I don't think they teach it anymore. But you know what I mean? Like math or whatever, uh, they need to be gone. It just needs to be, there needs to be zero tolerance, pol tolerance policy for that stuff. And you know what? If the 0.01% of teachers don't like it, then they can quit. I mean, it's fine. There are plenty of people that want to be teachers, especially at the elementary school level. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.